Hello, right, this is my second take because I just recorded this. It was a 15 minute video and then I realised that the camera just kind of went like that. So I'm hoping this one's a little bit better. Sorry. Anyway, this is my kind of review slash opinion type thing on uh, Ant-Man. Because I saw Ant-Man um, about four or five days ago and it took me by surprise. Um... The reason I'm making a video about it is because I was really excited about seeing Ant-Man um, when they originally announced it, which must have been about three years ago now, uh, because I remember going on the Comic Vine forums and talking about it for ages and really trying to see what the suit would look like, because the thing I love about Ant-Man is there's so many like different variations you could do to that suit. I hate the bloody original mask, because... What's that? What, what what's that? I mean, I know the kind of, just the ant thing would be a bit obvious, but what what's that? You know. Anyway, so moving on. So yeah, so I was originally excited about it, and then they changed directors, and then they changed again, and then they edited the script a bit, and then they changed it from Hank Pym to Scott Lang, while they announced it. Um, then they hired Paul Rudd. Then they did this, and it was just getting a lot of, not bad press per se, but a lot of fiddling about. Uh, nobody seemed to want want the film, um, and I just kind of lost interest steadily, like, it's just going to be a cheap, like, £2 film to make, isn't it? Um, and then I saw the trailer, which is a bad trailer, to be fair doesn't excite you about that film whatsoever and the rest of the trailers aren't much better um but i thought that about the age of ultron trailer so maybe i just am hard to please um no but i saw the actual film and i kind of ended up seeing it by accident but i'm not going to details i just kind of ended up at the cinema watching it but it was a good film. It took me by surprise. Um, and this is where the spoiler warning comes in. If you have spoiler allergies or any kind of condition and which is affected by spoil condition, con any kind of condition which is affected by spoilers, leave now. Spoiler allergies are not allowed here. Right, I'm ready to begin with the spoilers. So, we start off the film with Hank Pym going into Tony Stark. Not into Tony Stark, into see Tony Stark. And there's Agent Carter there and um, the other geezer. The naughty one. The naughty one. Uh, and he's on about them stealing his pin particle, which is, if you don't know, what makes him big, small, whatever he is, or whatever. Um, so... He's really kind of having a go at him for this, and I'll just pause here. I want to know why we have, like, top-class CGI for these Hollywood films. But they still can't work out how to put prosthetics on someone's face to make them look realistically old or aged in general. Kind of, you know, streaking her hair a little bit and putting a couple of wrinkles there and making it a bit baggy just yeah it just looks like the actress is wearing prosthetics which she is so anyway uh yeah so they're doing that and that's obviously to give you the backstory as to why they're using hank pym well not the fact as to why they're using hank pym but a backstory to for hank pym where to start the story basically so then you have your titles and whatnot and then you start off in the prison with scott lang <coughs> sorry scott lang um and it's really good i really like the scene because it's and in fact it happens in the whole film you have the i'm not familiar with scott lang so i apologize so i don't really know characters associated with him too well uh, but you have the, the latino guy um I think I think that's racially correct. I apologise if not. But uh, yeah, so you have this Latino guy and he especially, but others as well, provides this really kind of childish humour. But you're able to kind of... It's not a childish film and that's what I like about it. It's got this childish humour, but 
that would also make an adult laugh. It's not, it is childish humour, but it's still funny, which is kind of hard to understand, but you'd understand if you see the film. And that's what I really like about it, because you have that all the way through the film, even at the end, uh, when you're having sort of the big fight, and then Thomas the Tank Engine suddenly goes up to massive size, and then you've just got this little, uh, like, wide shot going past and you've just got Thomas's eyes like drifting across and then this giant ant uh, runs past and that's really quite funny I like that um yeah so you've got that uh the most important part is of course developing Scott Lang's but like backstory and um being able for him to get the suit uh which is done really well I really like the way they did that because they obviously reveal it to have been a setup type thing and uh it's just it's an awesome scene the way he does it and he uh it's shot really well and all of it's just put together really well it does kind of seem obvious that it's been set up by hank but that's might be because i know hank's character a little bit because i have read some of the comics and i've seen him in all the uh animated tv series and whatnot so i kind of know what to expect from the character so i do kind of expect that uh but scott lang i know nothing about so it's really good i they incorporate his daughter into it really well rather than just having it as a little sob story for the audience to go oh he's having just an odd life in tech bless him they actually managed to put it in without just making a kind of a burden on the character where you just get a bit bored which is to be honest jane in thor like not really she's I, I don't care about her there's just yeah anyway so yeah they do that really well and then you have them rev well this is a lot later down uh you have them revealing uh yellow jacket and I, I really like the way they do that because they set it all up as a heist which i think is a really good way to actually do the film because it's different to all the superhero films it's not the same you know becomes superhero defeats bad guy gets the girl becomes superhero defeats the bad guy bad guy's his brother gets the girl becomes superhero defeats bad guy gets the girl girl is his assistant person so yeah it's different and i like that and the best part is the way the actual attention to detail they put into it and this is where i go like crazy i really like the way that it happens in the training as well they specify the ants and they actually talk about not majorly but a little bit and i really like that they've done that um i recently watched a documentary on ants uh probably a couple of months ago three months ago four months ago um so I, I've got like a decent intelligence about them now. So I thought it was really cool when there's the scene of them like going down a boat of ants on uh, down the water, not down the plumbing. And it's really cool because um, I think it's it's fire ants, red ants, and I, I forget the name. I think it's fire ants. Uh, they can travel along water because they have hairs on their back. So they create like a raft and it does say that they can do buildings, but it doesn't actually talk about them being waterproof and whatnot. So they have these little uh, hairs on their back. Obviously, they'd still drown, though. So they constantly like rotate in the way that like penguins do with uh, the winter when they're huddling. Uh, so they constantly rotate. And the reason I like the scene is because it never talks, goes into detail about it talk uh, in the actual dialogue. But it does it in the actual screen so you have this close-up of uh scott talking and then you can just occasionally see an ant like walk by because it's rotating and i thought that was great that they paid like that much attention to detail um it's 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 just really good um yeah that's good the thing i would say about the end of the heist is there's some unrealistic moments uh, you have this gunfight with the ants can't well you have the flying ants flying towards the gunshots but there is a couple of times when you just think come on he's he's dead isn't he he's 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 dead you know he's dead 
Um, so that's a bit unrealistic, but then the end, you have the awesome fight, fight scene. And the great thing about this is they break it into two. I don't think there was any need to kind of introduce the Avengers at all, but it obviously made some people quite happy. Uh, you have a fight with Falcon and Ant-Man, and I've got to say, it's probably one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen, um, which brings us on. I don't want to talk too much about that one, because that's one you just have to see for yourself. But if I go on to the Yellow Jacket one, I want to talk about it, and you can see it for yourself, so it's a party for everybody. Um, yeah, the Yellow Jacket scene's really cool, because it's in the daughter's bedroom, and they use, I mean, it's kind of obvious that they would do, but they use obviously all the toys and whatnot as props so that's where the thomas comes in is he throws thomas and then he makes it big and it's pretty hilarious um it's a really good fight scene though like the cinematography for this is great because it follows like both the characters and it doesn't overdo it on the slow-mo like a lot of people do in these sort of hand-to-hand -hand, uh combat a lot of directors just go eh, slow-mo it all if it's all slow-mo everyone can see everything and think it's amazing and that's not true and um, unless it's the matrix then it then it's pretty true but most of the time it, it's not true um yeah so it's really cool because you've just got like i don't even know how to explain it it's just it's like a rotating camera i think while they're actually fighting but they're constantly changing between being small and big which i thought was a really good idea rather than just sticking to them being small you're making it clear it's changeable you know it's a power and whatnot and they actually also mentioned that it's fuel it's a suit like it is like iron man is they're not making it out to be just a superhero so it explains it really well if kids are watching it uh, and like i said it's got that childish humor so it would still entertain kids um so yeah that's the last fight scene is also really great and the, the last scene's a bit useless. Uh, it's a bit obvious. Uh, you've got the girl feeding the ant, which is, I guess, a bit funny. But the last scene's a bit pointless. I, although, to be fair, I often think that when you've had a really awesome fight scene and then it just dies down really quickly, it's a bit like, oh, okay. Or the cop, the cop has wiped everything from the computer for you. Okay, y you don't care. But... You, no, I don't think anybody ever cares about the last scene much. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, because it obviously ties it all and it finishes it off nicely. If you've watched Marvel films before, in fact, I think pretty much everyone knows now, generally you stay for after the credits. Don't bother with that, man. There's literally no point. It's the most obvious thing. Throughout the whole film, you've got Hank's daughter basically moaning about how she wants to be the Ant-Man and whatnot, and how it's so tragic that his mother died and didn't tell her, her mother died, and Hank didn't tell her the full story. And uh, uh, Although, um, a quick pointer is that I was actually quite surprised with when you see the wasp suit. It's not the actual wasp suit. It is similar to Ant-Man's, which surprised me because I thought they would actually do the wasp suit but i was actually kind of happy with it i was happy that they kind of made ant-man and wasp more of a unity rather than being kind of separate characters because obviously then they're trying to make her daughter the wasp which was the post credit scene and it was i didn't need it because i knew that was going to happen it you know you're the wasp yay it was a bit pointless um but the reason I think they actually did that, because I think originally Ant-Man was supposed to be released before Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. And then they moved it to afterwards. So I would imagine there was probably... An, may, actually, I probably wasn't in it. There would have been some other post credit scene, I think. And then when they moved it to after Age of Ultron, they just made that one really quick. Uh, I think that would probably what be what happened. Uh, so it's okay. Uh, the, the wasp suit's looking really cool there. Again, it doesn't look exactly like the comics or anything, but it's more waspy, which I think is important. Pardon me. Which I think is important when you're called the wasp. Uh, but it's still... Pen it's got a bit of red in there, and it still looks a bit 
you know, it's still affiliated with Ant-Man, which I really like. I won't like to see her for a couple of films, though. I'd like her to kind of keep out of the way, just let Ant-Man kind of gain some uh, spotlight, make him more known, and then be able to int introduce her in Infinity War. Because I imagine they'll probably do an Ant-Man 2 before Infinity War. I imagine there'll be a couple more films they will try to slip in that aren't already on the slate before Infinity War because that's quite a while away. Um, but that's about it. I didn't want to go into too much detail because this would probably be like a 25 minute video. It's probably like a 15 minute video now. Um, shout out to my friend Chaosarat. He just did a Five Nights at Freddy's uh, gameplay video. He's quite late to it, which he admits. Um, I don't like gameplay videos, but I'm really trying to do shout outs and kind of promote lesser known YouTubers because uh, I know how it feels to be a lesser known YouTuber so if anybody wants a shout out don't matter who you are send me a message or something or comment or whatever and I will uh, look at a couple of your videos and then give you a shout out and if I get enough I'll start making like a little list of shout out people so I'm going to do one a video although I don't do very many videos so you'll probably never get a shout out I apologize anyway like dislike subscribe share um i don't really care much about all that but i would like you to comment i do like reading comments um i like to know your opinions on things and i like to know uh why you think i'm wrong i don't want it to just be a ranty opinion but if you'll give me like a you know uh, if you give me like a uh, debate about it that was still the wrong word if you just kind of talk about it a bit more and tell me why you think your opinion and I can kind of see from that different perspective which I like doing and that's the whole point in this video is letting you see from uh, my perspective uh, so it's not a review it's an opinion uh, I hate it when people use opinions all the time but <laughs> now I'm doing it so yeah do that please please comment and I think that's about it adios amigos <laughs>